Hi there. Welcome to this tutorial JSTL in 28 minutes. JSTL is quite a simple topic, so I don't think we would need 28 minutes to discuss that. This would be a, quite a short video. In this video, we'll talk about the core JSTL tags. So, you'll talk we'll talk about tags like out, set, uh, if, for each and choose. And then we would look at a few formatting tags. Format number format date set locale at the end we will look at things which you should not use jstl provides a number of tags things like sql xml these are not things we should ideally do in a jsp we'll look at what are the things you don't need to do in a jstl let's get started we would start with the core jstl tags first thing is jstl stands for jsp standard tag library so it's JSP standard tag lab. Let's first start with C set and C out. C set is used to create a variable in the JSP. Just like in the scriptlet, we created a variable, C set can also create variables. In the previous video, in the best practice of JSP, we said avoid Java code. And the way we can avoid Java code is by using something like C set. Even C set for me is a bad practice. But it's better than writing Java code. So you can use this C set and this is the name of the variable and this is the name of this is the value of the variable. C out is used to print the value of something to the page. Before you use a tag, JSTL tag, we need to do a small import. We need to define the tag library. The way you define the tag library is using taglib. I'm assigning a prefix C. So that's the C I'm using it in here. So I'm saying the prefix for this particular tag library is C. So if I call this C1, then I have to use C1 colon out. So I can call this anything. The convention is to use C for the core library. So I'll go ahead and use the convention and call it C. And so basically what we are doing is we are setting up dummy name to the variable and we are seeing C out we are doing a value is equal to dummy name let's see what happens so as you can see the value which we assigned to the variable is printed let's say this variable was not there what happens it prints no name so C out almost acts like a if condition so if this value is there then it would print this value else it would print this value since the dummy name variable is not available C out sees that that's null so it prints out this value which is present in here. That's our C set and C out values. It's almost like variable assignment and printing it out, but with a tag. Next, we would look at C if. C if is also very similar to a Java if, except that you have to put a test. So the attribute test contains the test what we want to check. So here I'm checking if dummy name is equal to null, then print empty. Now dummy name has a value, so it would not print anything to the screen. So it just prints dummy value and this does not get printed. Let's just say I don't create this variable dummy name. So I should see from here there should be no name and here there should be empty. So you'd see no name and empty. Empty is coming from here and no name from here. You can use see if to write a if condition in a JSP. The only important thing to remember is that the test condition uses the keyword test. So test is equal to and whatever expression you would want to check. So if this turns out to be true, then this code is executed. If this turns out to be false, then whatever is inside will not be run. The next thing we would be looking at is choose. Choose is something similar to uh, if else. A lot of people say it's choose is similar to switch, but in a switch, we just specify values. We don't specify a number of conditions. In that sense, for me, choose is more similar to a nested if else. So if else, if else, if else. So it's very similar to a nested if else. So when test is equal to this, I'm saying empty. When test is equal to dummy name has this value, I want to print dummy value. Otherwise, I want to print something else. Let's assign this some other value. Let's for the variable dummy name, I'm giving a value dummy value to. So this condition will not be true. This condition will not be true. So something else should be printed. I will also remove the if condition here. 
just to make things easy. So it's printing something else. I'll also remove this one. See out. So what's printed is something else. If I give it the value, dummy value, then it should print this. So this is printed. And if I remove this, it should print empty. That's what is printed. That's your choose JSTL core library tag. The last one which we would be looking at is for each. So, see for each, uh, what are the items? So, this is the thing which I am looping around. Here I am using a implicit variable which is available, which is header. Header returns all the key value pairs of the values which are put into header of the request. So, I am taking each one of those and the loop variable I am using is header value. When I am using it, I am putting the value as header value dot key. Header value dot value. So, the key and its value. Those are printed using for each. When I refresh the page, you would see that the entire set of headers are shown on the screen. So, there are a lot of headers which are coming in. And you can see all the values from the header on the screen right now. So, this is an example of a C for each. Now that we looked at all the core JSTL tags, we would move on and we would look at the formatting tags. The formatting tags which we would be looking at are format number and format date. Before we use the formatting tag library, we will include the tag library. Cut, cut, cut. Before we use the formatting tag library, we would include it in the JSP. So the way we include it is very similar to the core. The only thing which would change is the format FMT at the end and the usual prefix which is used is FMT standing for format. Let's start with formatting amounts. So I have a amount to be formatted which is set to a specific amount of value. Don't worry about the value itself. It's a quite a bit large value just to see how it's formatted. So I'm creating a variable and I'm setting it a value. Usually these kind of values would come from the servlet. The default formatting of format number. So format number is the tag which are which we are going to use. You need to set an attribute called value containing what is the amount to be formatted. So I'm saying this is the amount to be formatted and the way it should be formatted is currency. There are other attributes which you can use on the format number tag. One of them is max integer digits, which is Maximum number of in digits which would be shown in the integer place. So I have this many digits in the inti cut cut cut. I have this many digits in the integer part of this number. What I'm saying is only show three of those. The next important attribute is max fraction digits. This constrains how many fraction digits has to be shown in the number. So only three. And also, there is something called a pattern where you can say, I want to see it in this particular pattern. So, here we are saying we want to see three numbers dot another three numbers E0. We want to see it in some format of this kind. Let's see what the output of this is. By default, we formatted this as currency, and this is how it's shown. So, when you format something as currency, it's shown with the dollar symbol that's the current locale which we are using and it's formatted so this is shown as 12 million and 89 cents so you can see that automatically it's truncating the other parts of the digit so i'll also print the amount without using any formatting so that we can compare so uh, you can see here it's adding commas to the amount properly formatting it adding the currency and also it's reducing it to two digits so here there are five but actually when it's formatted it's as currency it's only showing two digits when i use max integer digits is equal to three you can see it's only showing the last three digits only these three digits are shown nothing else and also you can see that the number of fraction digits is also reduced to three when i set maximum fraction digits is equal to three without setting the max integer digits then you'd see that the number is formatted properly 
on the integer part of it, there is no change. However, on the fractions part of it, there are only three which is used. You can see that when I specify a pattern, it's using that particular pattern. So it's formatting it into a way where it's able to express it as some kind of a power of E. So these are the different formatting options on numbers which are present in the JSTL library. Let's now move on to formatting dates. Formatting dates is very similar to formatting numbers. I'm creating a variable called today and I'm putting today's date in there. And I'm using a tag called format date. There are two types of dates. One is time, the other one is date, and the other one is a combination. So you can either say type is time, only time is printed, or say type is date and only date is printed. And you can say both, both date and time are printed. Let's see this running. So, when I say type is equal to time, it prints the time only. So, it's printing only the time. So, the current time is 8.54. And when we say type is equal to date, it prints only the date, June 19, 2015. And when I say type is equal to both, you see that both of them are printed together. So, that's how you format dates. There are a lot of advanced options in formatting dates. We'll look at them a little later. Next thing we look at is the set locale. We are using the do default locale, that's the US. So when I refresh the page, this is how it prints the time and the date. Let's see if I use a different locale, what happens? The way you set the locale is using format, set locale, and set the locale here. I'm using locale of Netherlands. Netherlands is a country in Europe, so I'm using that locale. And you can see how the output changes. Now, the output is in June 19th. Let's refresh. See the way the format of date is changing. It's changing to 19 hyphen June hyphen 2015. This is how you set the locale. And once you set the locale, that locale is used for all the formatting tags. So, usually this kind of a locale setting is done on the servlet side. It's generally not done in the JSP. But this is just to show you an example of how it's done. Setting a locale is a very important part of internationalization. You want your application to work in different countries and you would want it customized to the locale of that people. If the people of a particular country are used to seeing a date in particular format, it's always good to show them the date in that particular format. That's where the locale comes into picture. Let's end our discussion on formatting tags here. In the last section, there are other the JSTL tags like SQL tags, XML tags. The SQL tags would help you to even query a database from a JSP. We would not cover them in this tutorial because ideally we should not use them. All the J SQL queries should be fired from a data layer of a web application. You should never fire a SQL query from a web layer. And Firing it from a JSP is the ultimate sin. And similarly with doing XML processing, all the XML processing should be happening in your business layer and not in the view layer. So even though there are very simple tags for doing SQLs, XML tags on the JSP side of it in the JSTL, it is recommended that you don't really use them. In this JSTL tutorial, we looked at the core JSTL tags the formatting tags and looked at the tags which we are not going to use. Until next time.